All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go with our first bout of the evening. It will feature three rounds of mixed martial arts in the featherweight division. And in the cage at this time, the man in charge of the action after the bell rings, your referee is Gaspar Oliver. All right, fight fans, introducing the Warriors. First, fighting out of the blue corner. This young man is wearing the blue trunks trimmed in white. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 144 pounds. Tonight, he's making his, he's making his new breed fighter's debut. He's trained by Edwin Polche. He's from the fight firm MMA. Please welcome Mariano Mario Vidro Rivera. And introducing his opponent in the corner to my right. This young man is wearing the purple trunks trimmed in white. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 141 pounds. He's also making his do breed fighters debut tonight. He's trained by Michael Castro and Jeff Lentz from Castro's Martial Arts. Please welcome Carl Swanson. Three rounds, featherweights. All right, Brian, so we're here at the Tower Theater, right? Fight number one, New Blue Fighters in Pennsylvania for the first time, and I'm pumped up for this fight. Pumped up with the air, feeling good. First fight of the night, Carl Swanson against Mariano Vidro Rivera. It's one of my favorite weight classes, you know? I like the featherweights. I like to see the speed. Well, as you know, Mike, speed is something that's close to my heart, okay? All right, here we go, round number one underway. Both guys throwing heavy leather to start. Up. Both fighters with uh, no fight. So, you know, you come into a, a, an arena like this, 3,000 seat arena, and it's a little nerve wracking, right? Do you remember your first fight? Absolutely do. Uh, big venue, same, same type of situation. A lot of pressure, a lot of stress. Any guy in here for the first time is going to have some cage anxiety. And I'll tell you what, Paul Swanson is going to have to get those hands up and protect himself. Good job clenching up there. Rivera's landing some punches. Rivera is going punches, and then the clinch is throwing the knees. And that's the key to this game, is staying busy and inflicting the damage when you can. Rivera, obviously the taller fighter with the longer reach. How does that affect the other fighter? Uh, you know, in this game, you want to use every attribute that you have. Uh, Rivera's punching hard, he's using his reach, but there you see Swanson, oh. big right hand, Swanson big connects. right hand. Both guys, if someone's going to go down here, I don't think this is going to go to a second round. I said it in the beginning, I love the lightweights, they can fly, man. We're well, seeing I, a lot of connections here. And, Michael, I think you have to agree, both gentlemen showing a good chin, they've taken some shots. Sure. This is an amateur fight tonight, this is a pro-am. So you'll see that the fighters both have shin pads on, which is a an amateur uh, rule that we have, where you won't see that in the pro fights tonight. That is correct. Nine fights this evening, seven of them amateur, two of them professional. A stacked card here at the Tower Theater in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Our ring official right now is Gaspar Oliver. He's a UFC veteran official, also a New Breed Fighters veteran official. He's been around for a long time. We've worked a lot of fights with Gasper. As you can see, both fighters now, there's definitely a bit of fatigue. There's a 10 second mark, so this is going to go to the second round. But as you can see, the gas tanks have come down a little bit, sure. which is very common here. Both guys have, have exuded a lot of energy. Great round. How do you score that first round? I, I tell you what, it's a very close round. I'm going to give a slight advantage to Vidro Rivera. I think he landed more shots. However, Swanson landed a right hand that made Mariano say, well, let's, yeah. let's, let's take this fight to wake up here. I agree with you, man. Rivera had a great round, but don't sleep on Swanson. He came right back at it. He got inside and landed the shot. And you'll, you'll notice in the cage right now where Swanson is. A uh, great trainer by the name of Michael Castro. Michael Castro's an experienced guy. And uh, if he's training with Michael Castro, he's definitely uh, taking some shots and throwing some back. I hear, uh, just going to say that both fighters look like they have pretty good wins. Yeah, well, again, in this weight class, you got to expect the guys to have a good tank. You know, they're, they're going to be in good shape no matter what they're doing. You know, but nowadays, everyone cross training. Seconds out. I think the key to this fight is going to be keeping a chin down, hands up, and whoever can get the advantage coming out of the clinch, because they are going to enter the clinch a bit more. Good first round. Excellent first round. A great way to start the night. What do you expect out of Philadelphia? Round two. Nope. 
I'm answering that while I'm looking. At, I never know if we're going to have a, that one big punch or kick that's going to end it here. Well, Michael, I think you can agree that the venue is fantastic here. Tower Theater is beautiful. Again, it's a 3,000-seat 3, 3, arena here in Upper Darby, Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia area, and uh, it's an electric crowd in Philly. They love their fights. They, yes, they do. True stadium-style seating, good venue, professionally arranged. Uh, I think the fans are excited. They're in for a good night. Hey, Brian, talk to me about the shin guards as an amateur. How do they deter from your strikes and your submissions specifically? They really don't deter much. Every one of these guys in here trains and spars with shin guards on, okay? Even the professionals, they wear them when they train. If you spar with them and you train with them and you fight with them, it doesn't make that much of a difference when you come in. I would say that most fighters would agree that the shin guards can play a role in some submissions. The submissions such as the heel hooks uh, and the, the, the ankle locks, they can really affect those, so you won't see as many fighters in the, in the amateurs go for those moves. Um, but certainly, you know, there's padding there, but if you hit, a, if you hit a, the right kick in the liver, even with a shin pad, you can put a guy down. I uh, actually have been kicked in the liver before and knocked out. That's one of my favorite places to go. Yeah, it wasn't fun. Yeah! And this is uh, down to the mat we go and see how their ground game is now. I'd like their stand up. Both the, both both guys are definitely thrown. I think Swans is a little a little weather. I think he's thinking to take this fight to the ground, regroup a little bit. He's taking a few heavy shots tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Another interesting thing I love to watch with these amateur fighters is you can clearly hear their coaches calling out, you know, moves and and things that they should be doing, and how do they pay attention as amateurs in their, in their first fight? Well, again, you're going, to you're going to go on instinct. Any guy who enters the cage is, is trained and prepared. And as we enter the 10-second the, the mark there, it looks like we are going to go to the third round. The, um, you recognize your coach's voice. Most of these guys have been training 10 weeks and many, many months or years beyond that. So they recognize their coach's voice in pretty much any, any area. Most fighters will have one guy that's doing the screaming, so you don't have a multitude of guys yeah. yelling at you. So, you know, who do you listen to? You don't want to add confusion. Exactly. I, I know uh, in my fights, I always listen to Jackson Galka. That was the guy that we had an agreement in the beginning. And, and you can actually see that and see when he says something, I'll do it when he says it. How do you score round number two? It, it, I think it was pretty close. Uh, I'm not so sure that Swanson got that takedown, but he did take some control. So, uh, again, you and I have always agreed on this point. What's the toughest job in the house? Scoring the fights. Scoring the fights. Yeah. Um, Generally, we're on, but we've we've been way off too, and that's yeah. and that's at the UFC, and that's that's here, and that's everywhere. Um, Look at, you know, East Coast MMA. One thing that we've always talked about is that wrestling is enormous on the East Coast. Seconds out. Uh, well, I, I think uh, anybody wants to have an argument with me about the best base for fighting, wrestling is the key. But I think wrestling, it, being so big on the East Coast, it also spills into the way these officials score their their fights. Yeah, if, if, I'll put it to you like this, and this was said to me: if you're on your back, you're losing the fight. Right, yeah. Swanson. This uh, is the third and final round. Oh, the third double leg and take final round. Let's see. Oh, he's right wow. there with the takedown. He may have that choke. I'm, I'm he's got it in deep. Swanson goes right for the takedown. He's got that choke sunk in deep. Peter Rivera struggling. I think this is going to be it. There's there the it tap. Is. There it is. Fight number one is in the books. And Swanson comes back. I was just going to say, round number two in the corner, in between periods, he's gasping for breath, having a hard time, and he comes out like an animal with heart. You know, I, I tell you what, when he, when he came in the cage, he looked ready. A great first fight. Both guys did a super job. You can't take anything away from Vidro Rivera. He has heart. He threw hard punches. I don't think he was ready for that double leg takedown. No. You know, Swanson didn't show that the entire fight. Stood within the first two rounds. I guarantee you his mindset was we're going to stand and bang, and boom. That's the best time to hit a takedown like that when the guy least expects it. Now, do you think Swanson's corner instructed him, let's use the takedown, let's let's try some of our wrestling jiu-jitsu Absol Absolutely. I would say that when they went back, you know, they're saying, you know, he's looking to stand. Now, remember, we, we you mentioned earlier, Rivera's the taller fighter. Swanson's got that lower base. It's going to be a little bit easier to take him down. A little bit easier, a little bit easier to take him down, get him on the ground and get control. Again, using the attribute that you have to win the fight. I definitely think that Rivera was looking to stand and keep throwing those bombs. And hey, again, give it to Swanson. He withstood some punishment tonight and he came out on top. For a young guy debuting tonight, very impressed with Carl Swanson. 0-0, now 1-0, Castro's Martial Arts Academy under Mike Castro and Jeff Lentz who's fighting here tonight on our in a minute. Great way to start tonight. Let's send it over to our ring announcer, Terrence TNT Crawford. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 20 seconds of the third round, your winner by tap out due to rear naked choke.
in the red corner, Carl Swanson!